So hi everyone and welcome to this video on uh, just the simple proof of Blackwell's sufficiency theorem, which is often discussed when dealing with dynamic programming problems. So um, uh, according to this uh, theorem by Blackwell, uh, if uh, X exists in some R-dimensional space, N-dimensional R space, uh, and uh, let um, B of X, so this function here, uh, this set here, be a space of bounded functionals such that the function maps from the set of a bounded a function f bound, uh, maps from the set of bounded functionals to the reals with the supremum norm. Uh, then, uh, if we define some operator t which maps from the set of bounded functionals to that same space, then it must satisfy uh, that satisfy two conditions. The first is monotonicity, which states that any two bounded functionals in the set of bounded functionals, say f and g, uh, and um, if it so happens that of f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to x, then we can conclude that the t, the, the, um, the operator evaluated at f and x, is less than or equal to the operator evaluated at g of x. And so that's monotonicity. The other property we need to discuss is discounting, which just states that for all beta in zero and one in that open interval, so any beta that exists in that interval, then this uh, sort of expression holds true that the operator at f plus um, alpha is less than or equal to the operator times x, uh, at x rather, uh, plus beta times alpha. So we're going to sort of uh, use these two properties in our proof just to prove that the operator that we have is a contraction mapping. And if you don't uh, remember what a contraction mapping is, um, so it just means that, say, t is some operator that operates from some space x to x, then um, for all beta in between 0 and 1, it must hold that the distance between, uh, say, two points x and uh, for all x and y in x, right? Then tx, the images of those two points should be less than or equal to beta times the distance of these two points, right? So that's what our definition of a contraction mapping is, and we want to prove that in the end. So let's now give a proof for Blackwell's sufficiency. Theorem. So let's go proof. Okay. So we start first with um, say we have two bounded functionals in the set of bounded functionals, say f and g. And it's obvious that f, okay, so let's um we can say f is equal to f, right? That's obvious, plus g minus g. So it's just a fancy manipulation. I'm just adding and subtracting g, it doesn't change anything. But uh, what we can do here is we can regroup this to G uh, plus uh, F minus G, right? And uh, we can actually say this, since this is minus, right? We can apply the sup norm, which we assumed earlier, so that F is less than or equal to G plus the sup norm of F minus G, right? So um, we can now first apply, so by monotonicity, monotonicity, so recall this particular form that we have here, monotonicity, then um, t f of x must be less than or equal to t of g plus the norm, the subnorm of f minus g, right? That's what we have there. And uh, we can further modify this, so by discounting, that discounting property, right? So we have this uh, form here on top, this one here. So uh, we have that t um, uh, f of x is less than or equal to uh, uh, t times g of x plus beta times uh, f minus g. And this is by discounting. So from here, we can just do some rearranging. We know that t f x minus t g x, right, is less than or equal to beta times the norm of f minus g. 
Okay, so we have that side. Now let's go on another side. Okay, so let's do, um, uh, so uh, let uh, G be equal to G now, plus F minus F. So we're basically gonna repeat the procedure, but for the opposite side. In the first side we did F, we'll now do with G. So this is gonna be equal to F plus G minus F, right? And uh, from here, okay, we know that um, G, okay, so G is less than or equal to, again, same transformation, F, plus the norm of G minus F, the subnorm. And we know that by monotonicity, by monotonicity, we know that um, uh, T, G, X is less than or equal to T um, times uh, G, I'm sorry, F, rather F, plus the norm of G minus F, right? So that's by bonotonicity. Then by discounting, by discounting, we know that uh, T, G, X is less than or equal to T, F of X, plus beta times G minus F, there, right? Then what we can do is we can rearrange these. So I'll rearrange it in a sort of unique way, but you'll be able to follow along. So um, I'll rearrange it like this. So I get a T F of X, okay? Then I'm gonna transpose this to the other side, minus T G of X, right? Is greater than or equal to, I'm gonna flip the sign, right? That's gonna be negative B beta G minus F, okay? And the reason why is, if you notice, um, these two things, this one, okay, let me use a better color here. So this uh, form here and this form here are exactly the same. It's just that the signs between them are different, which means that this expression here, boxed in pink, is bounded by these two intervals. So we can say that um, negative beta G minus F is a lower bound here for this uh, function here, t f of x minus uh, t g of x, okay, less than or equal to beta f minus g, right? And therefore, we can rewrite this as a norm, right? So this is gonna be norm of t f of x minus t g of x, should be less than or equal to beta times this norm, right? So this is from just basically this part here, we can make that a norm, f of x minus g of x. But if you recall our definition of a contraction mapping, that's basically it. A norm is a notion of distance. We have the images, which is these images, and we have the points here, which are the functions f of x and g of x. So therefore, this um, we have proven, okay, we have proven that T is a contraction mapping. And that ends our proof. Okay? So quite a simple proof uh, for this particular problem. So thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.